Fun fact, I had my very relatable YouTuber moment just now, because I'm recording this for a second time. Because when I did it the first time around, the camera was not rolling. Isn't that fun? Party people, we uh, gotta talk again about space and vacation and vacation in space. Humanity's next big break, crossing the final frontier, going to infinity and beyond. And why this entire space tourism thing um, that's still being pushed today might not be very feasible after all. Not now um, and not ever. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so uh, I guess roll that intro. Wait, Addy is getting shorter still? The hell? I swear to God, sometimes I feel like I'm being watched. Not gonna lie. Which, um, of course, might come in handy one day, because this is, of course, uh, the infamous Christmas episode of uh, Out Here. Nobody will hear you scream. So a, a couple of days ago, I, I came across this ad campaign, right? And it got me thinking about the future of space tourism. Um, let's just watch it together and let me give you my thoughts on it. And um, maybe you'll chime in too for a change. Attention, galactic travelers. All space flights have been delayed again. We've all been there. You book a million dollar seat on a spaceship, get all dressed up for a 15 minute space vacation, then your space flight gets delayed. Oh yeah, that, uh, that very relatable moment uh, where your million dollar space flight gets delayed. Who hasn't been there, right? But did you know there's an out of this world experience that's a lot closer, doesn't cost millions of dollars and has oxygen? Right here, in Iceland, in Iceland, in Iceland. Look at these lunar landscapes. Oh, alien white forms. Wow. Those aliens sure look weird. Enjoy food that's fresh. Mm, not freeze dry. And air. Yeah, that moment when you're about to nut from breathing in fresh air, am I right? In many ways, Iceland is a lot like Mars. If Mars had hot tubs... In many ways? W what are the many ways? I mean, sure, there's like nothing there and it's like rocks. But name any other way. Please. Go ahead, I'll wait. Isn't he funny? So, space tourists, you could keep waiting for a trip to an endless void, or you could just come to Iceland. And if you already made it to space, just look out for our billboard. Yeah, so I, I guess make sure you um, you look out for that billboard. Um, I'm sure you I'm sure it's still there, right? Where would it go? It's not like there's like tons of debris in in outer space or anything. Just look out for the billboard. It'll be there forever. Now here's a funny story, uh, sort of an anecdote, if you will, or or not. I'm not judging. A couple of days ago, me and two colleagues of mine gave a presentation on space tourism at university. You know, the university that I attend to become a teacher so I can then tell children or how society sees them, the little taxpayers of tomorrow, so I can tell them the one thing they, they want to know, how to become a YouTuber, right? Because that's all they want to be. On that note, maybe now that it's almost Christmas, why don't you check in with that one guy from your hometown who's still very much trying to make a living from his rap music, huh? See how he's doing. Lend him your ear, maybe buy some merch. Speaking of, so I uh, I set up this merch store, right? Just kidding. This is um, this is not the merch section. We'll do that later. Um, remind me, would you? Um, yeah, sure. I guess um, about what specifically? Uh, my new merch. Uh, I got a whole lot of ideas. I'm talking cups. I'm talking shirts. I'm talking hats. 
And what are you even going to put on those? I don't know, like my logo, a memorable quote maybe. You know, I always say party people in the beginning. I'm sure you noticed. That seems pretty merch friendly, I think. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, at the, at the beginning. At the beginning of what? Of my videos here on, on YouTube. I'm sure you're subscribed. Dude, who are you? I'm just here in line at the DMV. Gotta renew my license. <laughs> Expires on Christmas of all days. Can you imagine? This is my apartment, good sir. Come to think of it, how did you even get in here? Oh, I just, uh, I just climbed in through the chimney, as one does. By the way, uh, thanks for the, for the milk and cookies, son. They were delish. See ya. Okay, so, um, where was I? A university presentation, space tourism. So we did our thing there, right, in front of uh, very attentive, laser-focused students, all very eager to learn, um, to get to know uh, SpaceX and the Billionaire Boys Club and so on. And we also included this clip, just until one of them remarked how uh, photoshopped that, uh, that billboard at the end seemed. Um, here, I'll show it to you again. But guess what? That footage? It's not CGI. That's not some video editing wizardry. That's a real billboard. So real, in fact, they, uh, they even made a making of. They, uh, they should have a thing for oxygen over there. Uh, maybe even like it a little too much if you catch my drift. Boop! Well, um, I'm sure they won't miss it, um, if it's still there, I guess. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Well, doing our research for the Space Tourism Project, um, we encountered um, what we considered a, a fatal flaw in this entire concept of space tourism, right? You see all that training you have to undergo when becoming an actual astronaut, those those years of physical exercise, of pressure tests and whatnot, yeah, all of that is, is cut short for space tourism, which makes sense, right? You can't, you know, train for years just to go on vacation. And they cut it short to like a week, which does not at all prepare you for the worst part of going up there, which is, of course, space sickness. It's also often referred to as space adaptation or space motion sickness. And I'll tell you this much, this shit is the worst. You see, as someone who, um, throughout his entire life, has suffered from severe motion sickness and who has at one point been kicked off a small vessel in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and not be allowed back on until he finished throwing up. As someone like that, I will tell you this. That's not worth it. Don't do it. That's not that shit that shit's not good. No, you don't you don't you don't want that. Trust me. You do not want to make that experience. During our research we found this article and it says on here that space sickness usually lasts uh, from two to four days. And guess what? Even if you normally don't suffer from motion sickness or what NASA calls terrestrial motion sickness, that does not mean you're in the clear. Here I, uh, I found this quote by Stephen Lee Smith, a, uh, a former NASA astronaut. I'll read it for you. Your body just isn't built to deal with zero gravity but there's no way of predicting how someone will handle it. Someone who gets car sick all the time can be fine in space. Or the opposite. I'm fine in cars and on roller coasters, but space? <laughs> That's a different matter. Yeah, I mean, I get it. As someone who um, also is mostly fine on roller coasters, because they don't take that long, and who's also mostly fine in cars, especially when I, when I drive myself, right? Um, I don't experience any motion sickness then. Um, but I vividly remember my time at sea, and that wasn't fun. And yeah, this guy also says that on his like four space shuttle flights, he threw up a total of not less than 100 times. Can you imagine that? 
that's a lot. So is this still appealing to you, this um, this thought experiment of uh, breaking the final frontier? Is it? Is it really? Yeah? Well, let me tell you about the Vomit Comet, then. And if that term sounds like something a, I don't know, certain YouTube commentator would come up with for, say, comedic purposes, then, uh, no, no, I didn't. Um, that's what NASA calls it. It's NASA's name for a reduced gravity aircraft. I'm sure you heard of those, even though you may not be super familiar with the terminology. They're mostly used for astronaut training, um, conducting experiments in low gravity settings, as well as um, certain movie shots, actually. Now, why do I mention those? Well, you see, um, there was this guy. Is, actually. He's, he's still alive. His name is Jake Garn, and he was a Republican senator and congressman back in the 80s. Here's some uh, footage of him shaking President Reagan's hand. And he was very much in his prime back then, excellent physical condition despite being already in his 50s. He used to be a military man, um, he retired as a colonel. More specifically, he was a Navy pilot um, with more than 17,000 hours of um, experience in operating a military aircraft. And then, then NASA did him dirty. You see, they, uh, they sent him on the Vomit Comet to test whether or not that would affect him, which it didn't. Uh, so he was in the clear to go to space. Naturally, you would assume that um, if NASA were to send somebody like him to space, that would be all about, you know, prestige and cloud and uh, more for purposes of showing off, I guess. But here's another quote uh, from the article. Garn's purpose on the mission was in part to subject him to experiments on space motion sickness. How nice of you, you nerdy space boys. What fun he must have had on this trip, huh? Here's what one Dr. Robert Stevenson remembers from that mission. Jake Garn was up with Margaret Seddon, and they had a problem with one of their satellites. They were sitting there trying to put things together with tongue depressors. Jake Garn was sick. <laughs> he was pretty sick. I don't know whether we should tell stories like that. Yeah, how about hell no, Robert? How about you don't tell that story? How about you just zip it? Did that ever occur to you that that was an option? He continued, though. But anyway, Jake Garn, he has made a mark in the astronaut core because he represents the maximum level of space sickness that anyone can ever attain. And so the mark of being totally sick and totally incompetent is one, Garn. You assholes. What the hell? Is that necessary? Does that make you feel better? That's not nice. That's not nice. You shouldn't be hate. You shouldn't be like that. NASA, you should not be like that. Most guys will maybe get to a tenth Garn, if that high. And within the astronaut core, he forever will be remembered by that. The young kids don't know the origin of Garn. Yeah, and maybe they also never needed to know that, huh? Maybe you could just, you know, keep it to yourself. It's not a- it's just a name. Just- kids don't need to know everything. So, now that you know all of that, um, if you had to guess. If you had to take a guess, what fun nickname the uh, comic strip Doonesbury came up with after Senator Garn came back to Earth, uh, what would you think they went with? Go ahead, take a guess, I'll wait. Yeah, that's right. Boff and Jake Garn. If that doesn't make you speechless, I don't know what does. Later on, he seemed to be in on the joke, though. There's audio of him um, describing himself as that, and NASA even, you know, after some time had passed, uh, named a couple of facilities after him. After Jake Garn, not the Barfin part, obviously. So, what do you think? Still want to go to space? Uh, get a golden ticket, ride or die, with Elon and Jeff and Richard uh, on your way to Mars? Sound off in the comments below. Maybe leave a like, consider a sub, and make sure to check back in next week when we'll go fishing together. See ya. Welcome to my ant car. This is just a hangout. Yeah, I'm a crank that shit. Bro, that's so damn loud. It's nothing but a little intermission. Enjoy the soothing bars of other indecision. Buddy people, you can trust me. It's an ant card. I know all those fire jokes and get you saying hard. It's an ant card. This shit ain't some voodoo, bro. I know you want to stay, but it's time for you to go.